I previously built some cycloidal drive reducers to see if this would be a good way to build a new open source robot dog. Open Dog version 2 is my current version and you can find the build series in my channel. This dog only uses 5 to 1 belt reduction so it doesn't have a lot of power in its legs and it barely holds itself up and works. It's quite important though that we have a low reduction because it allows the motor to be back driven so we can get some natural spring in the legs. This is one of the main reasons that Open Dog version 2 works at all, so anything like worm gear reductions will make the dynamics of the machine much harder to handle. I considered planetary reductions for the dog, but we'd really need to have metal gears because I don't think that they would stand up if they were 3D printed in plastic, and I want to make as much of this open source and reproducible with 3D printing as possible. My previous cycloidal drive reducers were a 10 to 1 ratio, and this seems to give us a good balance of velocity and torque. My cycloidal drive version 2 had two cycloidal discs, and I used a total of 32 bearings to make it run smoothly. The whole thing is printed in PLA, but it seems to be pretty robust, and I had it push me for a few miles on a skateboard with no issues. However, my cycloidal discs aren't actually true cycloids. A cycloid is the plot of a point on a disc running along a surface, but we need to plot that around the discs in our drives and have them meet up perfectly. There are various ways to achieve this, but in the end I used a Fusion 360 plugin to create the discs. This makes it really easy to put the parameters in and then create a solid model of the discs and the casing layout. I modified the assembly from my version 2 cycloidal drive, but used the disc generated by the plugin. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The motors I used in the previous dog are Turning G Multistar 9225 90kV motors. Unfortunately these have been out of stock at Hobby King for a very long time and the other ones in the range are discontinued so I don't know if they're ever going to get them back. I found a very similar looking motor at AliExpress though, which is also less than half the price. It comes in various KV ratings, including 90 like the originals, although it's called an 8308, which you'd normally expect to be 83mm by 8. It does however seem to be identical to the 9225 when I put them side by side, so I don't know if one is a clone of the other, or one is a rebadge of the other. Well, it says 8308 on it, but it's definitely not 83 by 8 millimeters as you'd expect. So it's time to chop off the center pin, which I did on the originals so they fit in my cycloidal drive assembly. And that's because directly mounted on top of the motor is one of the offset cams, and in the bottom there's a captive nylon lock nut, which eventually has an M4 bolt bolted into it. The main casing for the motor fits on top, but first of all we have to put the output on which consists of 5 bolts, bolted into a piece that fits into a bearing. This time though I've used captive hex heads to stop them swivelling round when I screw onto the other end. And that fits into the main casing for the motor. That's attached with screws onto the motor housing, and of course now the motor and the output can turn independently, because they're going to be turning in different directions at different speeds. This time, instead of many many bearings around the outside, I'm using nylon bushings, and that's an attempt to save cost and also a little bit of mass. I bought a bag of a thousand of those because that's the minimum order quantity from Nifast in the UK, and these come in various different shapes and sizes. As with my previous cycloidal drive versions, before we put the discs in it's time for some silicon grease just to give it an extra bit of lubrication. And then we can slot in the first disc. And that seems to run pretty well. After that it's time for some 5mm spacers and the rest of the bearings for the second disc. In the middle there's another offset cam which is offset by 180 degrees and that's to support the second disc moving in the opposite direction so the whole thing doesn't vibrate. A bit more silicon grease and it's time for the second disc. 
And so far so good, that seems to run pretty smoothly with both discs in, and it's definitely back drivable. The lid has a number of holes in which support the top of the shafts for those bushings, and those holes don't go all the way through to the top. This lid's a bit of a funny shape, and we'll find out why later. We can now fit the top cap for the cams, and that's bolted through to that nylon lock nut we fitted earlier with an M4 bolt, which is a very tight fit. The top of the whole assembly has two bearings, one for the output and one to fit on that top cap that holds everything centrally, so with a bit of wiggle that can be pushed down and fitted onto the top. But before we see how that goes, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry, and they provide high quality low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just select your shipping destination and click on quote now and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board, and then you can select various options for manufacturing. Save it to your cart and enter your shipping information. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1 to 4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB ship worldwide and they have fast build times so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. So, everything looks pretty good, it seems to run pretty smoothly in both directions, but how does it compare with the version 2? Well, it turns freely enough, but I'm pretty sure the version 2 is freer moving. So you can see that's much freer moving, although of course it has been worn in a bit with the skateboard. But let's drive it the other way, which I'm going to do with a VESC and an Arduino and a battery. Now, it seems to run okay, it does sound a bit more clattery than the original one though. That's probably owing to the bushings instead of all of the bearings. Well, it's difficult to tell on video, but I actually like the sound of the V2 a lot better. I'm pretty convinced the V2 runs a lot better, and it's probably down to the 22 bearings instead of those nylon bushings in it. Even though I've got plastic instead of metal inside the new one, it actually weighs slightly more. That probably means the bearings don't make a significant difference, and the bigger piece of plastic on top is actually making it heavier. In any case, I want to build a test dog leg with both a knee and a shoulder joint. We're putting both motors at the top as we did with Open Dog version 2, and using a belt drive to drive the knee from one of them with a 1 to 1 ratio. So we just need to print a few extra parts for the second drive. This time I've built the body of the drive into the actual leg, and that means we don't have so many pieces to bolt together, and it's all part of one assembly. And again I'm putting those bushings onto stainless steel pins. So that's both discs in and everything assembled with the motor on the bottom, and it's looking pretty good. The top of this assembly is just round, but you can see the entire reducer and motor assembly is built through the leg. The lower leg has the pulley printed in, and that's mounted on 8mm internal diameter bearings and driven by a pulley on the motor at the top. This is really just a test leg to test out the motor holding torque, so I'm just using an 8mm bolt now, spaced out with some washers, and that means we can fit the belt on and try and get approximate belt tension. It's pretty loose, but I've allowed a place to put idlers so we can tighten that up later. The original motor with the T-shaped top plate is going to be our shoulder joint, so that's bolted to a piece with the same profile as the upper leg. And with a couple more washers inserted onto that knee, we can put the two together, and you'll see they're spaced apart in various ways. Two screws go through that profile piece into a block printed into the lower assembly. There's also three plates on the sides and the top, which keep the spacing where the motor is. I've made two idlers which have 6mm internal diameter bearings, and those are attached either side with two 6mm bolts to tension that belt up. So now we can see we've got a knee that moves pretty freely, and can back drive its drive and the motor. 
We also have the shoulder joint and both of those of course move independently back driving both of the motor assemblies in the leg. And if we give it some power we can see that moves perfectly well, we should have enough velocity and we should have enough torque. However I'm just adjusting the speed of the motor here so it's not particularly accurate. What we really need to do is put an encoder on and drive it with a proper motor driver. So I've stuck an encoder on the back of each motor which is pretty temporary with just a 3D printed part. These probably aren't the encoders I'd use but I would use the O drive which we're going to use to drive it as we have in previous projects. We're going to start with the leg at 45 degrees, power the motors up and see how much load we can put on it. The motor spec is slightly less than the original motor so I'm going to be using only 20 amps holding power instead of 30 I used in OpenDog version 2. But you can see that's got quite a lot of power and you can see the motor being back driven to give the robot natural spring. If I push down on scales I can push about 18 or 19 kilograms before the belt skips and that's something we'll discuss later. With the leg much straighter I can push nearly 25 kilograms, which is more than strong enough to hold the robot up while it's walking assuming it only takes two legs off the ground at the same time. And the leg itself weighs just over 3 kilograms, so that's well within spec for a dog weighing less than 25 kilograms in total. So pretty happy that's going to be strong enough and fast enough. The couple of issues we need to fix of course are the belt skipping and I already did this in Open Dog version 2 by double bracing the end of the pulley that pulls that belt just to stop the whole assembly flexing and the belt skipping so we just need to build that into this version. This isn't the final version, it's pretty much a crude test leg although my crude test legs are looking slightly better than they used to so there will be another refined version that comes up before we build the whole robot dog. The other issue is of course that clattery sound from the cycloidal drive, still some improvements there to make it as good as the V2 and of course we can do that just by putting bearings in it seems like instead of all of those nylon bushings. It will cost a bit more but I need to find a cheaper source of those bearings. There's 32 in each of these because there's 11 around the outside of each disc and 5 in the middle. So we just need to find a cheaper source than those. It's a shame the bushings aren't quite as good although you could get away with them if you really wanted to. So I am going to publish the Cycloidal Drive version 3 CAD on GitHub with all of my other stuff if you want to have a look. But of course there probably will be a version 4 with the bearings in and slightly different tolerances and sizes. So if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership those links are in the description below. And YouTube channel members and patrons can get access to all the videos up to a week early. And access to sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of all that discussion. Alright that's all for now.